Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Organize Your Purpose podcast. Yay, 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 yay. Okay, so first of all, I want to say thank you to all who have been following for the past three years. Yes, we are on our third year and it has been an adventure. But I hope you've enjoyed all of the previous episodes, which you can find on any of the podcast carriers out there. You will find Organize Your Purpose podcast. Anyway, today we're going to be focusing on main character energy, okay? So sit back, relax, enjoy, and do your thing. Let's get started. So when we look at our lives and we're making decisions for our greatest good, and don't mind me swiveling because I do this and I'm like realizing now that, wow, people can see me do this. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to just do what I'm doing, what I do, what I'm doing, Okay. Uh, I had a, someone gave me, gave me some advice before us and they said like, keep doing what you're doing. And I was like, okay, th- thanks. <laughs> anyway, so we're talking about main character energy. So you all have heard of this main character energy. Main character energy is this idea that nothing else in the world kind of exists. You are the center of it. So I guess things do exist, but you're the center of it. Even if you're in a group of people, Everyone in that group can have main character energy as opposed to there's one running narrative and someone's the main character and someone's the sidekick. No, it's a bunch of different, let's say, dimensions, experiences, universes that are happening all at one time. So with that being said, main character energy is basically saying you get up in your life and you realize like, whoa, I'm nobody's sidekick. (laughs) I'm nobody's da 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 da. I am the main character in my story. And when you have that energy, as well as you give others that energy too, because if you're a main character, you're trying to turn somebody into a sidekick, that's not helpful, you know? They are supporting roles in your life and that's completely fine, but they are their own main character too. So anyway, when you have that main character energy, you go about life differently. You realize that it doesn't matter where I'm at now, doesn't matter what I have now, doesn't matter who I am right now. If I see something that I wanna go towards and I'm willing and ready to take the effort to get in that direction, it's going to work out for my good. It's going to work out. It doesn't matter if it's gonna be tough, doesn't matter if it's gonna be easy, it's going to happen versus sometimes it can be just difficult just to work up the courage just to start something and you have no clue if it's going to be easy or difficult. You're like, well, ah. <laughs> you know, should I do this? Should I change this career? Should I start on this new path? Should I go back to school? Should I never go back to school? <laughs> should I quit school? Should I do this? Should I do that? Da, 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 da. Main character energy is basically saying whatever is important for you in this period of your life, decide what it is and structure your life around actions where you can do that. And over time, you're gonna get more and more confident within those areas of your life to be able to feel like, ooh, you know, I can feel impactful. I feel like I'm showing up. If you ever met somebody who has a hobby and they're really great at that hobby, it doesn't even matter if they suck at other parts of their life, they're really great at that hobby. When they show up to that hobby, when they show up to perform that hobby, to do that task, to do whatever that thing is, they show up with main character energy. At that point, it's not even about being competitive. It's not even about other people feeling like, are are you doing it right or wrong? In that moment, you're like, I'm doing this because it makes me happy and I don't care what anyone else thinks. This makes me happy. Main character energy is taking that and infusing that into different parts of your life. So, checking my notes over here. The first thing that we want to really focus on over here with this main character is taking chances. Main character energy is all about taking chances. Taking chances really is like, hey, I'm worth taking a risk on something that is unknown to me. So I'm going to take an emotional risk, um, a mental risk, a physical environment, locational risk, financial risk, uh, one or all of the above in order to do this thing. Also, you don't have to leverage yourself in ways that don't work for you at this moment in your life. Say you're having a hard time taking the financial risk. Okay, 
So maybe you're going to take a time risk instead. You're like, look, I can't afford to do X, Y, and Z. But if I have the time, I can figure out how to get to where I need to go over here. Now, the thing is that happens sometimes is that people can get so wrapped up in thinking there's only one way to get somewhere. There's numerous paths to get there. So they feel like, well, I don't have the access or the means to do it this traditional way or this way I think it should be done. So it can't happen. No, you can figure it out. Everything you can figure it out. So go over here, look at the other path and say, okay, well, I don't have the means, but I have the time. I'm about to go deep into Google, Reddit, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, all these places. I'm going to find whatever I need to find and whatever information I need to gather in order to work towards whatever that thing is. Versus maybe you have the financial means to do something and you're like, well, I don't want to waste my time. What if I start this and I'm not interested anymore? Okay, well, just start, you know, just start. Just take baby steps. Maybe if you don't want to spend the money, see if you can go over here and do it on your own without spending money. And maybe you get to a certain point where you're like, wait a minute, I think this is a good investment. Or trust yourself. Is this a good idea? Is this just something you're doing because you see other people do it? It's flashy, it's trendy. Are you doing it because someone told you to do it? Are you doing it because you feel like, hmm, maybe this is not the destination, but I think this is gonna open up doors. Or is it something that you've been working on for a long time and you're like, I just, I'm having a lot of false starts here. Regardless, if you have the financial means, why not do it? You can always stop whenever you want to stop. So just start in that moment. And sometimes you will get the answer to questions you did not even know (laughs) that you had about whatever is going on here. So maybe you wanna get more in touch with your physical body and you wanna take more movement. So you start to join a group fitness class, but then you actually start to socialize with these people in the group fitness class. Y'all going to brunches, y'all doing walk-in brunches, y'all doing walk-in lunges, (laughs) y'all are doing all kinds of stuff in this class and you're like, wow, I didn't realize that I could share this space with a group of people as well versus maybe you thought you were just gonna go there, be in a group and then go back into your everyday life. So there's a lot of opportunities that show up, but you gotta take the risk. And the risk is sometimes just feeling uncomfortable. Like you can go to a beginner class, a beginner course, a beginner this, and feel like, well, I don't even feel like I'm beginner enough. You know, I feel like I'm, I need some prerequisites to the beginner. So you might be nervous, push through it, keep going. The more that you show up, you strengthen a muscle. The more that a, a, a um, <laughs> internal muscle, um, a um, emotional muscle, a mental muscle, The more that you show up, you are counteracting how you would typically react to something. So as soon as you're uncomfortable with something, whatever it is, oh, you know, I just, I didn't do as well as I wanted to do, or, you know, it's just, uh, I feel pressure, da, 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 whether it's pressure for yourself or pressure on the outside, what could happen here is, okay, I don't want to feel this anymore. I'm just going to not go. Okay. So you don't go. But then you realize a month or two later, wow, I wish I had just kept going. I wish I had just kept pushing through in order to get to the other side of this thing. Versus when you're in the moment, you're like, hey, I don't feel good, but I'm gonna go. I can't give 100%, but I'm gonna give 20%. And if you're one of those people that's like, well, 25% is not enough, I might as well not show up. It's not, that's not the important part. You have an entire lifetime to figure out what is your perfect you know, way of doing something. All you need to do is get your foot in the door because if you get your foot in the door, you will convince yourself to come back the next time when you have 30% or 60% or 100%. You'll get used to it. And sometimes things never you know, change or shift or go away or something like that. But you no longer get bothered by that energy, by that experience. Like whenever I see a client, I always have this energy that pops up in me. And the reason why it's energy is because as an energy healing practitioner, sometimes I'm reading their energy before the session happens. So I have to be able to understand what's going on. But I also have to be able to separate their energy from my own life. And at first it was very, very overwhelming to the point where I enjoyed having sessions with people. I enjoyed helping them work through things, but it just became too much for me. 
And I had to take a lot of breaks. Like whenever there was a Mercury in retrograde, I would take a break. I couldn't do it. You know, I couldn't because it was just too much. And then I learned how to balance my energy in a way where I could go into the space, work with clients and still be balancing my own energy. But a lot of my life had to change. I had to work for myself. I couldn't have been overextended in other places. I couldn't have a not balanced life because taking on someone else's energy and having all of these other things happen in my life, it just was too much. But when I balanced all of those things, working with others, there's still that energy that comes up, but it's okay. I understand it's a part of the process. It lets me know, okay, so what is this feeling? I'm reading what they're sensing in this moment. So how can I tailor this session, this appointment, this whatever we're working on so that it can help them in their journey as opposed to this is just so much energy. I don't want to do this. I only want to show up when it's super easy and that it's that's just not how it is, you know, and it's even in your own personal life with other things like things that you like to do. Like if you said that (laughs) you wanted to start a new hobby and you wanted to knit, you're going to knit a little bit every day. I'm sure there's going to be a certain point where you're like, "Eh, you know, I'm kind of bored of this knitting thing. Da 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 da. I want to do something else. I, I want my knitted dress to already be knitted. And here it is. Just do a line, you know, One line, two lines, one line, two lines, or do it while you're doing something else, like you're watching TV or scrolling something. And that way you can incorporate it into something else so you can get there. And the cool thing about it, I actually have this when it comes to sewing. You all hopefully saw my sewing video. So definitely a shout out to Donna, um, who is the owner of So Chic Fabrics and Crafts in Maryland. She's such a wonderful person. Please stop by the website. And if you're local to the DMV, stop by over there too. And you can follow her on her social media stuff. Anyway, with uh, me going to sewing classes, I literally had no intention. That's what happens with me. I'll have no intention of doing something, but the things that I have a high intention of doing <laughs> It's always opposite anyway. So I had no intention of uh, no big sewing dreams, as as you could tell in the video. Uh, But every time I just showed up because I liked hanging out with the people who were in the shop. I liked talking to Donna and I also liked learning. I really, really love learning. So even though I have an idea of, you know, things I want to make, it just was cooler to see someone who is so far ahead in their craft that they could look at a piece of fabric and pretty much make whatever it is that they want to make. And so being able to ask questions, be inquisitive and get a break from my everyday life. I'm in a lot of roles in my personal life where People are asking me questions or guidance or I'm facilitating and creating and organizing things. So it was kind of cool to be in a space where I'm just sitting there and uh, someone else does it. And I like that. (laughs) I've really taken this past year to fill my life up with a lot of those spaces where I just kind of just show up and just do things. You know, I'm just like, hey, I'm here. You know, it is what it is. Uh. You know, Uh, but I say all of that to say that that first day showing up, I was super nervous. I was like, look, man, I don't really know how to sew like that. You know, I could take a little needle and put it in a thread, but I don't know what I'm doing. But to go there and to just keep going and keep going and keep going. And now it's just my my every week routine that it's like, oh, okay, this week I'm working on this or that week I'm working on that. And also to know that I had to shift my mind instead of going there and feeling like, oh, I should know all of these things in order to show that, you know, I'm a great student. Instead, I started to look at the instructor like, okay, if I don't know the answer, I'm just going to (laughs) ask, like, how do I fix this? And they tell you without you having to, you know, overthink it and stuff like that. And I do that in a lot of areas of my life too. So I'm saying all of that to say that when you have this main character energy in your life, you're making a decision. "Ah, I'm going to do this because it makes me happy. I I just want you to imagine I do a lot of hobbies in my everyday life that have nothing to do with long-term goals (laughs) at all. And so it's cool, you know, with me and you. But when I look in my everyday life, 
I don't notice a lot of people also do the same thing. They'll have hobbies, but it might be their one hobby. Like, oh, I really love this, so I keep doing it. But I try to do things that I that I suck at or I'm completely new at or, you know, I just wanted to try a couple of times. I went to Pilates like a month ago and I was like, wow, this is really cool, but my schedule's too booked. I can't fit you in there, friend. <laughs> but I really was in there thinking, I was like, wow. If I could have picked this up too, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I, I literally have run out of time to be able to do, you know, things like that. But on the other hand, you know, I have examples where I continue, you know, to strengthen my abilities and my skills as an esoteric person, as a knowledge keeper, as someone who tries to study various modalities to help you know, the community clients in my own interest. So I'll take different classes and courses. So that can be interesting too. So this year my theme was and is astrology. So I'm taking more and more astrology courses. And so that's fun too. So I show up and do that. And I know that already, but it's so interesting because I am self-taught and I'm self-trained. So going in a more formal route, it's like you learn things that you didn't even know <laughs> existed and probably never come up in an actual reading or session, but it's cool because you're like, whoa, I didn't know that. And another interesting thing is the unlearning I had to do. You, you When I was coming of age into astrology, even though the internet, you know, and Google was a thing, information was all out there. Like the only thing that was available for astrology probably was your, you know, zodiac sign, your horoscope. So just basically the placement of the sun. But when I started to work on the natal chart as a whole, understanding the other planets, starting to look at asteroids, understanding different points in the chart and how that works together, understanding different schools of thought when it comes to astrology, like what, you know, what kind of, uh, what type of astrology would you like to do? Then I start to realize, wow, it, it isn't as simple as people feel like it is. I've had people say like, well, you know, I don't believe in this, because they see it as, okay, there's just like this newspaper or this magazine clipping. But astrology is so much more analytical than that. It's so much more structured than that. It's a very, very long, like I'm talking about thousands of years that people have been using this and uh, across different cultures, um, showing up with different styles and different things. So it's so cool because I can take the analytical mind that I don't typically use when I'm in an energy healing session. I can apply it there. I can, you know, start to be like a historian because every time we have a transit, like, you know, Pluto and Aquarius or Saturn and Pisces, the first thing that we do as astrologers is we go backwards and we look to see, well, the last time that this happened, what was the experience that was happening? Now, don't get me wrong, just because this, you know, planet is in this sign doesn't mean the other planets were also in the same sign. So it's going to be totally different energy, but we can still see themes, that that show up like for example the last uranus is in taurus and uranus stays in taurus for about seven years the last time uranus was in taurus we had this experience of you know the stock market crashing the great depression this this and that that totally changed how we looked at money before there were it was the first time people were, were really getting access to personal consumer credit and then finally, when people realized, wait a minute, they were spending more than they could actually be able to pay, everything ended up bursting. And then you had this, you know, um, long period of, uh, uh, of scarcity, essentially. So there was a change, Uranus, that big change, uh, Taurus, which loosely can be seen in the second house loosely. I'll say that. Um, it's not one-to-one -one correlation, but loosely we can think about Taurus and comfort, Taurus and possessions. And your possessions can essentially be your money or what you need in order to feel comfort. So what's happening with this Uranus and Taurus? This Uranus and Taurus, what did we have? We had cryptocurrency, 
being uh being a big thing like the surge of of the different cryptocurrencies not the the first cryptocurrency but the surge of cryptocurrency uh cryptocurrency trading uh we also have defi so decentralized finance and things like that so there's all these things that show bricks is another thing that's showing up all of these financial things that are also showing up at this period of time silicon valley bank all of these so private equity so all of these different financial things that are showing up at this time that's changing and shifting the way that we utilize resources and money and things like that so for each one of these ex examples the goal is something very different like with the cryptocurrencies the goal is that while well, these government backed currencies can always be manipulated so you want to use the blockchain in order to truly store value but of course you know things can still be hacked things can still be this that you know all that stuff so trying to figure out how that would work versus you're going over to something like BRICS where it's like you have a bunch of countries coming together they're saying hey we don't feel like the west has been um playing fair when it comes to loaning money and being able to trade so we're going to come together we're going to create our own um currency and we're going to back it by gold and and and, and natural metals and things like that or natural resources and stuff like that and it's just interesting, these conversations that are being had, because when I look on things like, you know, TikTok and stuff, I know this is kind of trailing to the side, but I mean, it's a podcast. Um, when I look on TikTok and stuff and I see these, you know, big, scary conversations, it lets me know that some t for some people, it is the first time that they're thinking about these things, because this is not the first occurrence in the history of humans and people that these things show up so for example when we look at something like BRICS, right we're looking at brazil russia india china and south africa coming together and saying hey we're going to have a common currency that we're going to you know work together to, to have together so when we look at how much gold is out there this understanding of back in the 70s or you know prior to the 70s the u.s gold or the US money, fiat currency, was backed by gold, which meant you could take your gold, hypothetically, to the treasury and say, I, sorry, you could take your money to the treasury and say, hey, I want to get this much amount of gold for my $50. I don't know how much you, you was getting in gold back then. But anyway, the US started to realize, okay, we don't have enough gold to, to match the amount of currency we have in circulation. So instead of saying that we're backing this fiat currency, paper money, with uh, gold, we're gonna back it by the country itself. So then you ask yourself, why would someone want to back it with the country? Well, you can go to other countries around the world and you can see how things shift. So some are more stable, some are more volatile, and how they got to be volatile is a whole story within itself <laughs> because there was a lot of taking of resources. That's how a lot of powers came to be <laughs> in this current time and place. Okay, we'll say that for another day. So anyway, the U.S. was basically saying, hey, we'll, our economy will be so stable that it doesn't matter, you know, if it is the the highest value currency or something like that, it's gonna be the most stable currency. So then they started using the dollar as the reserve currency of the world, meaning you could buy things across the world with the dollar. So if you, speaking, if you're in, you know, uh, across the world, if you've ever noticed that people will accept the US dollar in places that aren't the US, in some places they'll accept the US dollar over their own currency only because maybe their currency perhaps fluctuates a lot. So long story short, I know I'm going on a long winded tangent here, but I, I want to uh, show you the information first uh, rather than it be like a clickbaity kind of thing. So all of that stuff is happening. So the U.S. says, okay, we're going to back this money uh, by the, the government itself. And so then, you know, the U.S. goes and meddles across the world wanting to control things, blah, 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 right? So <laughs> all of that happens. And 
it also has this ripple effect, meaning there's almost like a hierarchy, like being in the U.S., um, uh, being in Europe, who gets to loan money, who gets to get money at certain rates and this, this and that, that other places were at a significant disadvantage or almost they were being treated like, hey, you know, you you can you can have this, but your interest rate's gonna be much higher. So what they were saying is like, nah, you know, we're not going to use your currency as the, the reserve. We're gonna create our own currency. Okay, that makes sense. So they're looking for equity in that moment. So the way that people took this information and ran with it, I feel like in 20, 30, 40, 50 years, the things that people are saying and fearing, and, and I don't even feel like it should be a fear, the progression of things financially, I could see that being a, a thing where the US dollar is no longer the reserve currency of the world. I think that's that's fine. I don't, I don't see any problem with that. But I also don't believe that it, it's gonna be BRICS. Not because I feel like BRICS, there's anything wrong with it. I think that cryptocurrency has already challenged, maybe, maybe it hasn't found its resolution yet, the issue. The issue is that whenever there is a government-backed currency, that means that currency can be uh, impacted, manipulated, and things like that. So it doesn't matter which government it is. So, but so I do think that there will be systems in which we'll be able to trade each other's currency much quicker. So a uniform system, but we all are still a part of a global economy. There is no way to start to disconnect different countries. Um, and think that resources are still going to flow in the same way. I do like things that are shifting and changing. Like for example, the relationship between uh, different parts of Africa, different countries in Africa and China. China has spent time investing. I know this is going into a side tangent, but it's important to understand misinformation. Anyway, China has spent a lot of uh, money investing in certain countries in Africa because we know that Africa is rich in resources, rich in, in natural resources. But there are different countries and places that are now saying, no, we're not going to be exporting any of this anywhere else for manufacturing. We're going to be doing the manufacturing here. So they too are talking about equity. And so I think these conversations and these shifts and changes really matter, but it's not a, a, a blanket thing of how you see like you know, things just pop up like, okay, you know, don't hold your money anymore. Da, 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 da. Okay, go get you a bricks and go see if you can go buy something within the US. Go ahead. I mean, you're going to lose a lot of money just in trying to convert whatever it is you're trying to convert. So I'm not saying that it's not, um, it's, it's not needed or it's not, it's not a good, uh, pushback to the financial order of things. I'm just saying like, we got to use reason. And I'm saying that to say, to bring it back to the main character energy, in order to be a main character in your life, you cannot fall victim to any information that just shows up, especially when it comes to misinformation. And everything is still, we're still learning more. There's still gonna be more information that shows up. The, what I love so much about history is that history appears to be finite, but then we start to realize as time goes on, wow, we weren't listen to, listening to everybody's voices. So now we actually have more people's voices. So now history is changing and shifting. And you can see people having a meltdown about that too. <laughs> anyway, with all of that being said, being able to take the risk to be like, I don't care. I don't care what's going on out here. That don't, you know, like I'm still going to, I'm still going to be focused enough to do this. Cause I saw a lot of people like feeling like, kind of demotivated of like, well, you know, this is, this isn't working out and a recession and this and da, 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 da. And it's like, keep going. Keep, I promise you, it's not going to be your first or your last re recession. Keep going. You just have to shift and pivot in a different way. Also, when it comes to things like your relationships with people, when you're getting into a different place, you're not uh, acting the same way that you used to act. Well, now that you're in a new place, well, how do, how do I go about this? Well, here's the thing. 
they're gonna there's gonna be certain people in your life where they're going to get it they're gonna be able to follow you and and y'all could be one together but there are some people of different generations different experiences different understandings so when you're shifting and changing (laughs) perhaps they'll come with you or perhaps they won't you cannot spend your whole life sitting around twiddling your fingers, waiting for them to show up in that space. It's just not gonna work. So that main character energy is taking the risk to say, the the world is reshaping itself. My world is reshaping itself. So I'm gonna get in here and decide who I want to be, what is important to me, try new things out, as opposed to just letting things happen to me. So you gotta be able to take the risk. And you also need to redefine Second point, <laughs> redefine failure. Failure is not um, this this finite thing. Failure is simply saying, okay, I feel bad because I thought it was supposed to be like this. And if I choose not to take another action, I can say I failed at this, but you can always pivot. So then that's not a failure. A lot of times, when things kind of go to the side, that pivot really is what you needed to kind of get you back on course and back on track. So it's not until you get off the ride that technically it's a failure, like to bring it back into kind of the, the financial aspect of it. Whenever you see like a stock, if your stock is here and then your stock goes down, a lot of people will freak out. Say the, the company, say you you understand the company, the company is still great, but for some reason the stock went down, you actualize or you realize that loss as soon as you get out but if you stay in it and you know that this is a good company you know that financially it's really good maybe it's just people trying to you know manipulate the market in order to give themselves a discount you stay in it and when it goes back up whether that's the next day or the next year or something like that that's not a failure but if you get out when you're in that level then yes, now don't get me wrong, there are situations in which you do need to remove yourself. That's why when you're doing anything financial, you should know what you're doing. You should you should be investing, whether that is like stock markets, cryptocurrency, private equity, like VC stuff. You should only invest in the companies that you truly understand and you're invested in what they are, as opposed to just the tool of like, I wanna short something, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. Now. If y'all do y'all thing, y'all do y'all thing, okay? (laughs) I don't have nothing to say about that. If it's working out for you, it's working out for you. But a lot of people don't really know what they're doing in that kind of way. And then they feel like, oh, I'm not good at this because they pulled that out. Not understanding that when it comes to, and I guess this is a money theme, this, this episode, when it comes to looking at money and finances and stuff like that, Things are at its deepest discount when people are the most afraid. You look at how cryptocurrency dove down. You look at the valuation of different uh, companies from Silicon Valley Bank stuff. You look at how things have shifted and have um, uh, been in a different place. So this is a deeply discounted time when people can get these things. Also, I want you to pay attention to this. I'm gonna I'm bring bricks up one more time. The very interesting thing about this is that a lot of people will manipulate and use misinformation in order to control people, in order to get them to do things. And so the first thing you want to pay attention to is, number one, you can diversify. You can always have a collection of things to to make sure things are fine. But the second thing is pay attention because I saw this very interesting um, meme that was like, you know, rich, (laughs) rich people. I'm talking about super rich people. I'm not talking about people that you think is rich, but they're really middle class. I'm talking about like uber, uber rich people. They typically don't do things for the common good, you know, when it comes to financial interest. I'm not saying they're evil people. I'm not saying this or that. I'm just saying typically when they start to yapping and they start talking about things, they are trying to get y'all 
to let go of certain things so that they can hold on to it. So if they're trying to spook you out of a company or out of this or out of that, and you know that the company is fine, you know that it has a good trajectory, it's because they're trying to lower the value so they can get these things at a steep, steep discount. They do it all the time. And that's how they do. And they have so much money that they can withstand the discomfort of something being of a low value. They're trying to get in at that time. That's when it's deeply discounted. Can you see the psychology of that? When the masses, people who can't necessarily afford it, go running from something, they show up and they want to buy it all up. So it just lets you know that whatever you do, whether it is this financial thing or something else, Understand that opportunity happens at all times. Recessions can be one of the key uh, transfers of wealth when it comes to, you know, making money and, and going on into a new career or something like that. So I'm saying all of that to say, you feel like your main character, you can come up with 15,000 reasons of why you feel like something is not going to work, but it's still, it still can work. You just have to decide to show up for yourself. And you got to take those chances and understand that a pivot is necessary. A pivot is a part of the process. It's not going to happen the way that you thought it was going to happen. I had this realization when I sat down, I was like, wow, everything I ever dreamed in my life came to be. And it was hard for me to accept that because it didn't happen the way that I thought it should have happened. It happened in the way that was best for me. It happened in the way that was truly a, a way for me to connect with what I wanted, but it, it didn't happen the way that I thought it should happen. So I didn't feel like it happened. And it's so amazing if we just take some time to sit down and just ponder that, just ponder it just a little bit. Wow, how many things did I want actually happen in my life? But because it didn't happen the way that I thought it was supposed to happen, I didn't feel, you know, I don't feel like it. it's the same thing. I want you to stop and I want you to think about love. Sometimes people want someone who truly loves them very deeply. And then they turn around and they find out they're surrounded by a collection of friends who truly love them deeply. Or they have such a deep and loving family life. Or they've developed such a beautiful love for themselves and self-love and working on themselves and things like that. And they're able to share it with others in community. But perhaps they don't feel like they have the love they're seeking because they wanted it from a romantic partner. There's many times of, types of love. There's community love. There's friendship love. There, you know, the plutonic, plutonic friendship love. There's love from your family. There's so self-love. There's so many types of love. The love in your relationship with your child or with a parent, the love of the passion of doing something. There are so many examples of love that instead of wanting that all to be fulfilled by one type of love, which is romantic love, you can spread it out. You can get quality love from your family your chosen family or your born family, from your friends, from your community, from yourself. And then you can have that romantic love as icing on the cake. So many people won't acknowledge that they have a lot of love in their life because they feel the pressure. They feel like they thought, they thought in their mind it should happen this way. You do have the love. The love is surrounded all around you. Now, if you need to make shifts and change because you're like, hey, I want to have a monogamous relationship or I want to have children or I want to have whatever that is. You want a, a life partner where you travel the world with whatever, you know, whatever that thing is. OK, that's fine. But they don't have to fulfill every need and desire and want that you have in your life. That's your job. And you're going to have certain things that are totally have nothing to do with your partner. Y'all y'all don't care about that. Y'all not interested in that. Y'all not the same person. <laughs> and there's going to be other people in your life where y'all are interested in certain things, but you don't want them to be your life partner. So it's even shifting and changing and understanding that. Even when it comes to taking opportunities and taking chances, if you're someone who you want to skip steps and you want to get there quick, guess what? You end up getting there longer, right? That's how it always happens. Be patient. Go with the process. Just be patient. Just go with the process. And just understanding that setbacks are inevitable, but setbacks aren't. The, everyone is trying to look perfect. 
okay? Whether it is you physically look perfect or you're trying to portray a perfect life. And even when you tell the the stories where things aren't working out, it's perfectly curated and things like that. I totally get it. Because then on the opposite end is you see people who are just kind of like going through just breakdowns every day and they're just like, I, 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 and you, you're like, whoa, 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 are you, do you ever have balance? You, it, it seems like it's on these extremes where in, you know, reality, everyone's life looks different. Everyone's life has its ups and downs. You don't know every answer. I don't know every answer. I don't know. As, as much as I sit and I give y'all, um, I hope structure, I have to do that for myself. I have to counsel myself. I sit and I have sessions with myself. I surely do. I book, I book myself some time and I'm like, okay, well, we gonna work on me right now. And I literally go into my healing sessions, work on myself and talk to myself like, so wh- what are you trying to do? What are we trying to do? What do we need to do? Okay, so if I tell you to do this, are you gonna do it? Okay, I'm gonna work th- yeah, completely, completely. Everyone has feelings of discomfort. Everyone has feelings of a lack of clarity and they have inspiration and they have passion. Sometimes you're motivated and sometimes you're not, but you just keep it going. You just keep the momentum going. You just keep on showing up. I know that at this point in my life, it's easier because I've been with you all for a couple of years. And so it gives me a reason to like, okay, let me show up and keep working on myself and, and continue to create spaces where others can work on themselves too. But even in other areas of my life where I don't have this same amount of structure, I still got to show up. Like when it comes to hobbies, I started a bunch of hobbies at the same time and I was not good at any of them. And to go from feeling like, okay, you know, I'm at this point in my life, you know, I got accolades and different kind of stuff. I've mastered certain things and now I'm starting at the beginning of these these other things. And it was a very humbling experience, not because I didn't enjoy it or I didn't like it in that moment, but I was like, wow, it's going to take me a while. <laughs> it's going to take me years <laughs> to get to where I want to be, to where I could could see it. And I can't rush it, you know can't rush this or I can't rush that so I'm just gonna enjoy the process and just go with it and go with the flow you know that's just how it is so I say all of this to say when you are and yeah I went on those financial tangents but I say the the financial tangents I think are important and the reason why I will keep that in is because do not just listen to 30 seconds, a minute, even 10 minutes of something and think that it is the complete story just because a lot of other people are sharing a similar like scare kind of tactic thing, sit and think about mob mentality. Also think about cults. When you look at something like a cult, what is a cult? A cult is what is when a group comes together and they, as a collective, believe in something that probably a lot of times isn't factual, but will ostracize you or turn you into a black sheep because you challenge that thing, even if what they're talking about is crazy. So I'm not saying that, you know, that there weren't great points that are being made about different financial conversations, but things aren't here just to scare you. You know, things aren't here just to deflate you and make you feel like, well, here's a whole nother thing that I can't do understand that there's information. It's just simply information. So you want to take the time to get information from different sources to actually read up, or if you like to watch like documentaries and stuff like that, go and do some documentaries. That's why, as I take it back to the original point when I went on that tangent about astrology, that's what makes astrology so cool to me. That's why it's one of the hobbies I do in my main character energy, because it allows me to go down those historical, you know, tangents. The only reason why I know that stuff is because I went through, as soon as Uranus went into Taurus, I went into this whole history of, well, what happened the last time that Uranus was in Taurus? And I've been really sitting and reflecting 
over the past couple of years that it has been in Taurus. What does this mean? How's it showing up taking notes? Because the coolest thing about, you know, being an astrologer is that when you start living through things, you get to be like, ooh, okay, do my predictions line up? How are things shifting? How are things changing? This, this, and that, and da, 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 da. So that's a part of the hobby. That's a part of, you know, something that you do. So wheeling it back here. What I want you to do now is I want you to decide what do you want? What, what do you want right now? It doesn't have to be something that's going to last forever. What do you want right now? And what actions can you take and continue to take? Start to create systems. Like if you ever read the book Atomic Habits, that's a really good book for that because it talks about systems. Um, systems are routines. So you want to do something, you have a goal, you have to work towards that goal, you know the steps. That step has to be infused in your routine that becomes a system. You'll be more likely to get and go in that direction of wherever you're trying to go in if it is a, a system, if it's a part of a routine as opposed to it's a one-off thing and you have to will yourself to do it. No, what is the most digestible steps that you can take that you have incorporated it in your everyday life? It really is that simple. Okay, so go ahead and do that and come back and share. Share the journey, share the wisdom, share the aha, share whatever came up in the moment. And we just gonna do this together. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode and I'm so excited to share it within this new space as well. So I will see you next week. The podcast happens once a week. Typically it is not this long, but you know, we had to do it a little different. Uh, There will be guests. (laughs) Gotta get them guests together though. (laughs) And we're gonna have a really great time. So um, can't wait to see your journey unfold Um, and to just show up, just do your thing. Just do your thing. Your purpose is your purpose and you get to shift it and change it and mold it however you want to do that. So see you next time.